Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, we just took a look at learning some basic editing techniques. So I want to keep rolling with that idea, because now that we've started to get rolling with editing, we want to start to actually be able to put things together. And obviously what's next most important to editing is actually getting in and doing some very basic effects work. And when I say basic effects work, I am talking about some transitions. So what I want to do in this lesson is I want to talk a little bit about transitions, how we're going to apply them, what you have at your disposal, and how you're going to be able to get in and just speed up your overall workflow when working with transitions. Okay, not a long introduction. Let's just get into Avid Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony, or obviously a command tab for all my Mac friends out there. And before we can actually talk about transitions, we're obviously going to need some footage in a timeline that we can actually transition from and transition to. Okay, so let's come over here to our boxing footage that I just happen to have open now. The only thing with the boxing footage is that that footage is obviously very silhouetted. So I think what I'm going to do here instead is I'm just going to open up another bin here. I'm just going to step up. I'm going to come into my stock footage folder. And let's come into the gliding folder here. And we'll just see, perfect. I've got a shot of this hang glider here. So what I'm going to do is mark an in point. I'm going to hit I to mark an in point. I'm going to come down here. I'll hit O to mark an out point. That's again on both Mac and Windows. And what I'm going to do to edit this clip is I'm actually going to create a new timeline by simply hitting B on my keyboard. Now B is to overwrite this edit or this clip into a new timeline. Now the only thing is, is that if I hit B right now, it's going to create that new timeline inside of the gliding bin, which I don't want. What I want to do is I want to have Media Composer prompt me as to what bin I want to put this clip in. So all I'm going to do is open the Learn Media Composer bin, just like such. And now I'm going to hit B on the keyboard. Again, you'll see Media Composer is now prompting me to select a bin to drop this footage into. So I'll just select the Learn Media Composer bin. I'll simply say, OK, there's my first clip. And let's just grab another clip here at random. We'll just grab that one. Sure. Got our hang glider flying through the air here. Very nice shot from Digital Juices Video Tracks HD. I'm just going to hit B to edit that into my timeline. And I now have two shots that cut from one shot to another. Now what I want to do is get in and add just a very basic transition between the two shots. Now there's a long way and a short way to do this. Of course I'm going to show you both ways. And let's start with the long way first. Now we need to get in and find all of the effects that we have access to on our system, third party and standard. And there's two ways that we can do that. The easiest way is to actually press Control and 8 on the Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. Or what you can do is you can actually find it right up here under Tools. You'll see it's called the Effects Palette right there. Again, Control and 8 on the keyboard. And here is the Effects Palette. You'll see we have a lot of effects we have access to in here. Again, some of which are third party. You'll see that right now I have all of the Boris Continuum Complete 8 plugins. I know you're probably thinking, oh, well, you know what? You know, you do all demos for them, and you know, so that's probably why you have them. But you know what? Believe it or not, that's actually not why I have them. And this is something that I want to point out. When you make your purchase of Avid's Media Composer, you actually get some third party products with Media Composer. And one of those third party products is Avid Effects. Avid Effects is Boris Continuum, is actually Boris Red 5 rebranded called Avid Effects so that you can get in and do compositing right from within Media Composer. You don't actually have to leave the application to go to a program like After Effects to do compositing work. Now, for everyone that purchased Symphony, you're going to get not only uh, Avid Effects, what you're also going to get is Boris Continuum Complete 8 as well. Now, what's important to remember is that once you make your purchase of Media Composer, you're going to get an email that has the information and your licenses to download the software and start working with these great plugins right away. So I encourage you to take that email, you know, archive it somewhere so that you always have it, because you're going to want to make sure that you have access to it all the time. Okay, so let's talk about creating that basic transition. Now, what most people start doing is they start clicking through, attempting to find it. Now, if we're going to work this way, where you're going to find the basic dissolve transition is right down here in Blend. You're going to see I have a few effects in here, the first one of which is called 3D Warp. Now, we're going to get back to 3D Warp in a completely separate tutorial because, believe it or not, I can actually spend a whole tutorial talking about just 3D Warp. But right below that, you're going to see that we have some transition effects. Now, Media Composer is a little bit different from a lot of other nonlinear editing applications, whereas the dissolves aren't all, or all the transitions aren't all kept in one location. We've got dissolves in certain places, we have wipes in other places, and this is where we have access to the dissolve effect and a few other transition effects that we're going to talk about in just a second. But the easiest way to get in 
this way and add a dissolve in our timeline is to simply find the dissolve just like this. We're going to take it and we're going to drag it right down here into our timeline and we're going to drop it. You'll see as I come over top of the edit between these two clips, the edit turns blue. This means that this effect is ready to be dropped on just like that and you'll see now if I come back and I hit the space bar to play the clip, there's a dissolve between the two shots. Now I'm just going to close the effects palette for just one second here because I did say that there was another way that we could get to that. Control and 8, obviously the shortcut, which I encourage you to use if you're going to go into the effects palette. But the other way to get into it is actually right here inside the project window. You'll see I can switch over and there's the effects palette with all of the effects I have access to on my system. Now for me to be perfectly honest, it's not really the ideal way to work. Now why would I say it's not really the ideal way to work? Well you'll see I took that dissolve, I dragged it and dropped it onto my clip. But how long is that dissolve actually? I really don't have any information about that dissolve at all. I basically just took that dissolve, I dragged it, I dropped it in between the two shots. Hey great, I have this dissolve, but now how do I actually get in and adjust anything? Well, I'll show you how we're going to get in and adjust it in just a second, but I want to show you the other way, the easy way to actually apply a transition between two shots. What I actually need to do first though is I need to remove this effect. Now most people start kind of looking around going, okay, well can I select it? Well, I can't really select it and hit delete on the keyboard. Well, what we actually have to do is use a command. Now, I actually have that command mapped on my keyboard as F5. But if you don't have uh, Remove Effect mapped on your keyboard, and trust me, you really should have it mapped on your keyboard because it's a really essential uh, command that I use all the time. If you don't have it mapped onto your keyboard, you can actually find Remove Effect located right here. So I can hit Remove Effect and that effect will disappear. Or again, I'm just going to hit Control and Z or Command and Z again for all my Mac friends out there. Uh, I'm going to hit Control and Z to undo what I just did. And I'm simply going to hit F5 on the keyboard and that effect is now gone. Now let me show you the easy way to add that transition between these two shots. And you're going to be using this as opposed to coming up into the, you know, the blend category and to dissolve. Uh, and how we do that is actually simply by hitting the backslash key on the keyboard. Or if you for some reason have remapped your keyboard and you don't have it as backslash anymore, you can actually find it right here and it's called quick transition. So what I'm going to do is simply hit backslash on my keyboard. Let's just make sure I actually have the timeline selected. I'm going to hit backslash on the keyboard and now I'm brought to the quick transition uh, window. Now why did I say we should do things this way? Well there's a few reasons why I said that. The first and most important reason is right here, duration. You'll see the default duration for adding a dissolve into my timeline is 24 frames. Well, that's one second because I am working in 24 frames per second. But let's say I want it to be, you know, half a second, no problem, 12 frames. Now what I can do is simply come down and I can say add and that will be added into my timeline. Now what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to remove that again, backslash on my keyboard, because I want to talk about something else. You'll see that I clicked on add and I have one called add and render. Now why would I use add as opposed to add and render? Well, obviously you'd be using add and render if you're using an older system, or if this happened to be a transition, you know, maybe from a third party plugin like Boris FX, that is not real time. Now, how do I know the difference between a real time effect and a non real time effect? Well, it's actually very easy to tell. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply hit add, and you're going to notice that my effect down here has a green dot over top of it. That green dot tells me that this effect will play back in real time. I'm just going to hit F5 here for one second. And just for argument's sake, I'm going to come up to the BCC transitions and you're going to see that I have some transitions in this package that have a green dot, but a lot of them don't, like swish pan, for example. So I'll just take swish pan. I'm going to drag it down here. I'm going to drop it onto my clip or actually in between my two clips and you'll see that I now have this very cool transition. The only thing is, is that if I come back and I hit play, what's going to happen is I'm just going to get that cut between the two shots. Why? Well, because this transition actually needs to be rendered and I can just hit render effects right here. I'll just simply render it to my data drive here and you'll see in about a second I now have this shot ready to go. So remember, green dot means it will play back in real time, blue dot means that it won't play back in real time. Okay, again, let's get back into our quick transition. I'm just simply going to hit backslash on the keyboard again. You'll see that Media Composer remembers what the last duration I put in was, 12 seconds. What else we can do from the quick transition window as well, you'll notice that before when I hit add, to add this into the timeline, it's centered in between the two shots. So because this transition is 12 frames, we got six frames before, six frames after the cut. But maybe I wanted to have it start at the edit and move its way into this shot all 12 frames. Well, how I do that is very simple. Again, I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard. I'm going to hit dissolve. I can simply come up to position and I can say, you know what, I want to have this starting at the edit. I can now say add and you can see now that the dissolve starts at the edit 
and goes 12 frames out from there. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you know, what a pain. Every time you want to get in and adjust something, you have to keep hitting F5. Then you got to hit, you know, backslash again. Then you got to hit add again. You got to look at it. There's got to be an easier way to get in and adjust this transition while there is. And this is going to be a technique that you're going to be using when you're working inside of Media Composer or Symphony uh, when you're doing effects work. Because you're going to be getting in, adjusting keyframes, you're going to want to get in and adjust effects. And this is really how you're going to do it. You're actually going to be stepping into effects mode. Now, uh, a couple ways to get into effects mode. I have a shortcut mapped on my keyboard, Shift and Y. It's something I've always used, and I have it mapped as Shift and Y because I use it all the time. Now, I picked Shift and Y for a particular reason, and I'll show you why right now. So again, like I said, we need to get into effects mode. So my shortcut, Shift and Y, if you don't have effects mode mapped to your keyboard, you can actually find it right here, effects mode, or you can find it right over here, effects mode. But again, like I said, for me, Shift and Y is my shortcut, okay? So now we're in effects mode. Now let's just say hypothetically I was done doing whatever I wanted to do and I wanted to get out of effects mode and back to edit mode. Well, getting back to edit mode can be done one of two ways. I can navigate right up here and click on edit mode or called source record mode or the shortcut is Y on the keyboard. So you'll now see why I have shift and Y mapped to be effects mode and Y mapped to be edit mode because those are really the modes I'm going into most of the time. I'm going to go into trim mode as well, but we'll get into that in a different tutorial. But Y and shift Y you're going to be using all the time. That's really why I have those two uh, mapped the way that I have them mapped. Now let's again hit Shift and Y on the keyboard because from within the effects editor what I can do is I can adjust a couple things. But the main thing that I want to adjust right here is I want to adjust really where this is coming from. So let's just come back here. Again, I'm just going to click on the transition. Let's just get back into effects mode here. My effects mode actually just appeared behind my uh, preview window here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right over here because I want to adjust the transition alignment. What that basically means is where this is actually happening on the edit. You'll see where, you'll see right here that I have it starting at the cut. Well, maybe I want to have it centered at the cut, just like that. Maybe I want to have it ending at the cut, just like that. Maybe I want to extend this down and make it 24 frames, just like such. There we go. This is now 24 frames. You'll see now that it takes a whole second for this shot to transition from one shot to the other. What I can do again, step in, I'm simply going to come in, I'm going to punch in 12. There we go, 12 frames. So you can see really getting in and adjusting these transitions after the fact is really very simple. And you'll see also using your shortcuts by simply hitting the backslash key to get into the quick transition window just saves you a whole bunch of time. Now you're going to notice that that window is not called the dissolve window. It's called the quick transition window. Now it's called that for a reason. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this effect. Again, my shortcut F5 on the keyboard. And I'm actually just going to come back over here. You know what? Let's do this the, the little bit of a longer way, but not as long as that way. I'm going to hit Control and 8 on the keyboard because you'll remember I showed you at the beginning uh, adding a transition from here. And you're going to notice that I have dissolve, uh, fade from color, fade to color. I even have a dip to color. And you'll see it's a bit of a pain dragging each one down. But like I said, you'll remember quick transition. And it's not quick dissolve. So let's again hit backslash on the keyboard because the very first thing you'll see is add dissolve. Maybe I don't want to add a dissolve. Maybe I want to add a dip to color like I want to do a flash to white. So let's add that in. Let's maybe make this, oh, I don't know, three frames. We'll make sure that it's centered. And I'm simply going to say add. Now you're going to notice that the default color is black. Now, I don't want it to be black. I actually want it to be white. We want it to do a flash to white. Well, again, remember, let's go into effects mode, shift and Y, because black is the default color, but obviously not the only color that we can use. Again, I'm just going to select white. And now guess what I have if I come back and hit play? I have a flash to white, just like that. And again, I could come in. I can hit shift and Y. I could make this, you know, 12 frames if I wanted to. Again, Y on the keyboard to step back in edit mode. And there we go, from one shot to another. Now, what I also want to do here is let's just add a couple more shots in here. Maybe we'll just take this shot here. Sure. Drop this in. Let's just come right down to here. Drop that in like such. And I'm going to add one more. I think it's the last one yet. Yeah, didn't use the last one here. Perfect. Take about that. Because what I want to do is I want to get in. And you know, the producer said to me, you know what, I really like this, but I really want to have dissolves between each one of these shots. And you know what? We'll do them as quick dissolves, or you know, sometimes they're called soft cuts or soft edits. So let's maybe make these about, you know, five frames. So most people would think, okay, well, what we need to do is we need to come in and we're going to come here and I'm going to add a dissolve. So let's just come in. We'll say dissolve. I'll say five frames. 
Let's make sure I do this right, not hit F5. I'll hit 5. There we go. Perfect. Add. Again, come down. Add that in again. And you know, this can become a long and tedious process. I mean, I'm only dealing with, what, three edits? But what if you had 300 edits and you just wanted to add this in between all of them? Well, what I can actually do is come back here. I'm just going to remove that effect by hitting again F5 on the keyboard. I'm just going to mark an in point. Come all the way down here, mark an out point. And now that I've added that in and out point, I can come back and actually hit backslash. And you're going to notice that I have a new option down at the bottom that simply says apply to all transitions into out. Now, if there happen to already be transitions on some of these edits, I could say skip existing transition edits. But, you know, in this case, I don't have any existing uh, transitions. So I'm just going to turn that off and I'm simply going to say add. And you're going to see now, boom, those soft edits have now appeared in between each one of these shots. Now, let's just say hypothetically, I'm just going to come back here. Let's just remove these effects. Because you're going to notice that when I added the dip to color, again, I'll just hit backslash here. Let's do the old dip to color. Yeah, maybe five frames we'll leave it as, and I'll simply say add, okay? Again, I'm going to step into effects mode, and I'm going to switch this color to be white. Now, the only thing is, is that I could go in and add uh, the quick transition and select the edit points and have Media Composer or Symphony add those transitions. And the only problem that I run into is that I'd have to go into each effect and adjust them to be white because it would automatically default to being black. Well, there's got to be an easier way to do it than, you know, let's say I had 600 edits, than going in and doing things that way. Well, there actually is. And this is a technique I'm going to show you that's actually going to come into play a lot later on when we start talking about more, you know, uh, intense graphics work. And it's basically a way to pull an effect off of a clip or a transition and save it into your bin. And it's actually very easy to do. Much like I said, we're actually going to take this and we're going to pull it right off there. So all I'm going to do is take it right here from the effects editor. I'm going to grab it, I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it right down here in my bin. And you'll see it's been called dip to color. But what I'm going to do is call it white flash. Okay? And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to remove this effect by hitting F5 on the keyboard. What I'm going to do is close the effects editor. And most people might think that, you know, okay, well, you're going to take this and maybe you'll have the in and out point marks and you'll take it and you'll drag it onto the first one and apply it. And it'll apply to all of them, but it doesn't work. So what do we do to actually make this work? Well, let me show you. I'm just going to undo what I just did here. What I'm actually going to do is step back into effects mode by pressing shift and Y. Now, because I don't have any effects applied to anything, I'm going to go into the effects editor, but nothing is really going to happen. But I can still actually get in and select either clips or transition points with the effect editor selected. So what I'm going to do is with the effect editor active, I'm just going to click on the transition point just like that. You'll see it highlight with blue. What I'm going to do is hold shift and I'm going to select the other ones just like that. Now I know you know where I'm going with this. Now with these transitions selected, these edits selected, what I'm going to do is come back to my white flash and simply double click on it. And you'll see now that that has appeared in between each one of the edits. Very nice. So you'll see, applying transitions inside a Media Composer or Symphony might seem like a simple concept, but a lot of people find themselves, you know, coming into the effects palette and doing things really the long way. When using the quick transition uh, method really should be your way to go, because you'll see that you can get in and add a lot of different types of transitions very quickly. And with the technique I showed you, it's a great workaround to not being able to get in and do the mark in and out point in between a bunch of transitions, because you're going to run into a bit of a hiccup like the whole dip to color being the default color of black. So you'll see, get in there, step into effects mode, select all the actual edit points, then simply double click on the transition that you've pulled into your bin, and you're going to be able to apply that transition. Maybe you don't need to apply it to all of them. Maybe you only need to apply it to some of them. Great thing is you can pick and choose what edit points you want to apply that transition to. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.